Hello everybody, this is Excel Video 327. I'm Nate Moore. I got a call the other day from a group that said, hey, our parent organization wants to get all these reports out of our system. They want to use this analytics program or whatever. And can you help us get all this information out of our system in the format they want? And I said, sure. And we pulled some things together and made it work. When your parent organization or your academic group or whoever it is wants some reports out of your system, I'd love to help you. I flipped back to the reimbursement pivot table instead of e &M because I needed a little more detail going on in these numbers to show you what I want to show you for this Excel video. What I have here only works if I have two fields here. You've got to have multiple fields in the row labels or in the column labels area to pull this off. And it has to be the one above. It can't be the bottom on the bottom rung of the ladder. How's that for a technical Excel term? It's got to be the one of the higher ones in the in the hierarchy or the priority, if you will. Because what we're going to do is we're going to go to field settings for primary insurance. Here's primary insurance out here, and we're going to go to field settings. And from there, what I want to do is instead of automatic, I can turn subtotals off like I could before. But I'm going to do custom, and I'm just going to pick some. Just throw those five out there, and let's click OK. What that will do for me now is it says, OK, Nate, for Medicare, the total amount for PCP, orthopedic, and cardiology is $6.8 million. The, the count of claims, now obviously I need to do a little formatting here because it's not in dollars. It's, it's 1,199 claims, not $1,199, if that makes sense. But I've got an average claim, the maximum amount, and the minimum amount of a bill charge. I also have it for the write-off, for the amount allowed. I've got all this information that I can use now. And the way I did it was I went here to field settings and I did custom functions. And there's some other functions down here in terms of statistical stuff like standard deviation and variance. But there's a bunch of information that you can show on your pivot table. So if you're looking for bill charge is a good example. Some real detailed information. Tell me about the average and the count, the, the highest, the lowest. Maybe that matters even more in a reimbursement environment, the highest and the lowest and the average reimbursement and how many claims are we looking at. There's all kinds of things you can do if, you, if you're willing to take the space. You have to be willing to take the, the five rows or three rows or four rows, however much information you want to show. But there's the sum of Aetna, the count of Aetna, the average of Aetna, and you can do all that kind of information for every field in this higher one on the list, primary insurance. Interesting way to play with with subtotals in pivot tables. I thought that might be helpful for some of you that are kind of playing with pivot tables, doing a little more complex things. And I appreciate you watching. Look forward to seeing you next time.